Like, alright guys, so today's the day I'm gonna finally get the head swap done. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the car running because I hadn't planned on doing this uh, quite yet, but my machine just called and told me the head was ready. So now I'm just waiting on Trey to get here so we can get started. And there he is, the man, the myth, and the legend. What the hell are we doing today? We we'll get this head swap done. I tell you, this man is so busy, I had to literally make an appointment two weeks ago <laughs> in order to get him over here. That's how serious it is. Yeah. But yeah. even still, he's here. We're going to see if we can get this knocked out today. Um, hopefully, we don't run into any problems. But of course, with Project Car, that always happens. Like I said, most of this we're going to put on a time lapse, um, especially the disassembly part, and then we'll cover um, a little more in detail. After we go over to put the new head back on us so you guys can see what we're doing. All right, guys, so we got everything disassembled. Taking the head off is pretty easy. We got, took the battery out, the intake. Um, we took the bracket off the back of the intake manifold just so we can take the whole head out as one piece. We actually cut the time belt because, of course, we won't be using the single cam time belt anymore, and it just makes it a little bit easier. And a couple holes on the back, and that's really it. Um, of course, you want to make sure you drain. Try not to make too much of a mess. We did do a good job here with that. And I went ahead and replaced the starter while I was in here since I had the exhaust manifold fall off. So next, I'm going to go ahead and put the Hyundai water pipe in. And we can really start assembling the head over on the toolbox. Let me get this thing set on. All right, so what we did was grind down part of the manifold to get the fuel rail to fit. We're just showing how we notched it out. Then we just use a grinder for it. And now the fuel rail sits flush and you're able to tighten it all the way down. All right, guys, so I got the head just sitting on the block right now. I did go ahead and drop the bolts in. Um, I'm getting ready to torque these down. But I wanted to make sure all my routing, um, my routing of my wires and piping and hoses and whatnot were all clear before I started torquing everything down. I had to fight with them. Um, now, I did end up using my Evo um, dipstick tube because I wasn't really happy with having to bend uh, the factory one, the factory 64 one. Um, and this Evo one actually bolts into the intake manifold. It actually has two brackets on it. The one at the bottom of the tube doesn't actually fit anything, but the one at the top bolts right into this little hole uh, on the intake manifold. So that's good. Um, keep it, help keep it in place. Still don't know if I have to use the throttle cable. Um, I probably will just because I have it. But as of right now, the factory throttle cable still in here. I'm just letting you guys know. I didn't. I got this um, not so much because I wanted to keep cruise control, but because it was at the junkyard. It was you know a lot cheaper than trying to get an Evo manifold, and it is an upgrade. Um, but we had to trim part of the bracket. We had a trim part of this bracket. Right here, there's normally a, a bar that goes right here to clear this fuel line. So we did have to do that. We had to modify it a little bit. It shouldn't be that big a deal. Let me go ahead and stick the water pipe in because obviously that'd be a lot more difficult to get to. Once the head is on, then I'm gonna go ahead and torque these bolts in. Now I'm gonna put the torque pattern in here just in case I mess this up, but you're basically gonna go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine ten now obviously this is going to be different from like arp head studs because uh, again these are factory bolts but these are torque to yield bolts so you need to torque these down to 58 foot pounds and then loosen them and then you torque them down to 15 foot pounds and then turn them 90 degrees then you go back through the sequence again and then torque them another 90 degrees i'm going to go ahead and get this head torqued down I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I did run into a little issue. Now, I guess I might have got ahead of myself and did this a little out of order. It's just getting the crank pulley off. So after doing a bit of research, what I'm gonna try is um, you just crank the engine over with the breaker bar like on the ground. So apparently this should crack that bolt pretty easily. Um, there's a ton of torque on this thing and my uh, electric impact is not quite strong enough to get this off. So I'm gonna try this and see if it works. Now, obviously the car's not gonna start because as I showed you, Pretty much everything is unplugged. So yeah, the car's not going to start. But just the starter kicking over should, well, hopefully, we'll pop that loose. Alright guys, so that was really sketchy, but it actually worked. I actually take this off now with 
with his impact. All right, guys, so I'm looking at the bolt that I just took out that I was just struggling to get off. It looks like they used some anti seeds, which is like this white stuff at the bottom here. And there's this big chunk of goop. I'm not sure what this is. Well, this is it looks too thick to be thread locker, but maybe it is. Maybe it's red thread locker. Almost like a piece of bacon. But that's why I think this is probably why I was having so much trouble getting this thing off. Messed the inside of that bolt up a little bit, which is why I went to using the 22 millimeter on the outside. But whatever, we got it off. All right, so before I get too ahead of myself, now that I got that bolt out the pulley, now I'm gonna just go ahead and take this engine mount off. I'm just gonna put the jack pretty much under the transmission. Uh, I don't wanna lift the engine, I just wanna take a little bit of slack off of this so I'll be able to pull this out um, and then lower it down a little bit. That way I, I can pull that pulley free and be able to access some of that stuff down there a little bit more easily. So I got the engine supported. This side bolt here, I'm gonna take off this side bolt that's here and then these three up here and they're all 17s. So before I take that last bolt off the mount, um, I'm going to take off the lower timing cover. Now this has a few bolts that are all 10 millimeters and allow us to get to this pulley that's on the water pump. Um, it's, it's kind of a tight fit, but you can definitely have squeeze it now. You can raise the engine up a little bit. So you can replace your water pump. Now here, of course you see the old water pump after I've got everything removed. It's a little dirty, but overall it looks to be in pretty good shape. You want to make sure you match up the holes on your old unit with the new one just in case you got the wrong part and make sure your gasket and everything fits then you want to go back to the block and clean off any residual like gasket that you may have on the block so now I got the new water pump installed after I've cleaned everything um, reattached all the brackets so now it's good to go so next we're going to work on buttoning things on the head back up um, there's a couple things that we need to do. We need to install the cam caps. We need to install the cams, the cam caps, and the new lifters. Um, what we're going to do first is go to the lifters, and I'm actually going to work on cleaning them. In order to do this, I use just a cup with some diesel in it, an Allen key, and you just insert the Allen key into the lifter, and you'll feel it. You can press a switch in there, and you'll be able to see the old oil coming out of the lifter and you want to do that just to make sure you get anything out of the inside of the lifter so now that I've got them clean I got them lined up everything looks good I'm going to work on putting my auto tensioner back in here now I am using the Gallant belt on this build I do have the Evo belt but I'm going to save it for later um, in order to compress this if you don't get a new one you just put it in a vise um, and just push it down and then again I stuck another allen key into that hole to hold it still I'm just going to bolt this back onto the engine and then when I got everything timed up and the time belt back on, I'll be able to just pull that pin and it'll put tension on the belt. Now when you look at your cams, the key thing to remember um, is you want to make sure that your dial pins are lined up with the timing covers. Now with the cams in, this is where they sit naturally. So they're a little off. So you want to make sure you adjust them lining up. And that's why you need at least one adjustable cam gear is so that you can tune that intake side. Now I'm going to use this adjustable wrench here to turn the cams. And so that way I can hold them in place and then zip time in place. Like that way I can put the timing belt on. Move that just so, so you can get the timing right. And then you can see this is why you do this. Because in order to get this timed perfectly, you're gonna, you can see it's going to have to, it's going to have to push on that, it's going to have to push on that valve a little bit. Before I do that, what I'm going to do is take these cam caps up. Put a dab of RTV on each side, on both of these. Same thing in the back. And on that cam sensor housing, the on the other end. I've got to mention these cam caps going to be torqued to 25 foot pounds. On a, in the opposite pattern of what I went on for the cylinder head, I'm going to start on the outside and just kind of bounce from outside and work my way in. And I'll do that with each one. So I'll put a picture of this up too, but I'm just showing you the timing marks on the bottom of the engine. So you have one on the oil pump, on the crank, and on the balance shaft in the back. So you're going to make sure all those are lined up. Again, before you put the time belt on and before you pull the auto tensioner. All right, so on to the belt. So for this build, I decided to use the Galant belt. Um, the Evo belt, which is actually up top, does fit, but it's a little bit tighter. And since the engine was in the car, I just thought it was easier to use the Galant belt. Now, while I was done, I did decide to go ahead and swap out the power steering and the alternator belt. And so these are the part numbers for those. Again, if you go with gates. All right, guys, so I just want to advance auto parts. I got this new upper radiant hose. 
As you can see, the stock one is way too short, so you do need to get another one. Um, I'm not sure what car this is from, but here is the part number. Basically, I just bent a wire coat hanger, and I went in and asked to see what they had. Um, and, I, and I just matched the coat hanger up with something that came close. Um, like I said, this is a pretty good fit. Of course, this is a bit of an odd angle because the top of this neck comes out at an angle this way, and then it comes back this way. But this actually has, this actually has that bend in there. This hose actually cost me $15 from Advance. Or you can also go to the junkyard and just get another rate, lower rated hose from another car. Just make sure you check the condition of it, make sure it's not cracking. So there's another thing you can check off the list. Next, I am going to extend the wires for the cam angle sensor and I have to rewire the throttle position sensor as well as fix these injector clips. So basically I got a lot of wiring to do. And I guess I did forget to mention, I did cut about said, three inches off of the stock lower radiator hose. Probably not necessary, but it has it sit in its more natural position. So for the wiring, you just go to your local auto parts store and pick up a couple of different colors. I try to match up the wiring um, as closely as possible to the OEM stuff just so it makes it swapping easier. Um, leave a little bit of slack in the wiring because of course the engine does move. And after you do that, you should be ready to give it its first start. Alright guys, first start up. Alright guys, so there we have it. So she does run. Um, just quick note that on your initial startup, your lifters will make a lot of noise until they do get filled up with oil and get adjusted. Um, other than that, use this opportunity to go ahead and burp your cooling system as best you can. Get your cooling system filled up. Um, I guess I did waste a little bit. That's why I was smoking a little bit of... And for temporarily, I did have to... I capped these off with some tape uh, because I don't actually have any caps for it and that was causing a vacuum leak. But other than that, it seems to run fine. I'm sure I'll run into a few more issues as I get the kinks worked out and actually get to driving the car. But as for right now, sitting in the garage, everything looks pretty good. Um, overall, the swap is pretty easy. Um, you want to take your time just with the electrical bits. And this is kind of how I ran things. So, what I end up having an issue with is that this is just a ground. You can ground this anywhere. Um, the only reason it's here is because when I extended it, I actually didn't extend it long enough because I didn't realize that this hole here is actually too small for most of these bolts. So you need one of these smaller bolts. This is a 10 millimeter, a 10 millimeter bolt. And the only one that will reach after I extended it is this one here. Um, you can use this one down here by the battery tray as well. That's the ground. But mine's just there because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't extend it long enough. Didn't feel like redoing it. I was being lazy. Um, my cam sensor, of course, you had, you have to extend that. That's pretty simple. So depending on what year thermostat you get, some of the Hyundai thermostat housings have two sensors, just like the Mitsubishi one. Um, but this one I got only has the one. This wire is a sensor wire that's going to go to the one that goes inside the car and shows the temperature gauge. So this main one down here actually runs to the ECU, where well, that small one runs to your gauge cluster. I used, and I recommend you using your factory Eclipse slash Galant one. I'm not sure if the Hyundai one will work. Um, it is three pins as opposed to two, and that could be because that third wire or that third sensor is supposed to go to your gauge. I didn't really feel like messing with it, so I just used the Eclipse one. I also use this is the Eclipse cam angle sensor. Again, I'm not sure if the Hyundai one will work, but again, the Eclipse one will work and it's only one bolt, just swap it over. And one thing I had an issue with that took me a while to figure out is I didn't have spark. That was because this little little black box in here. And at some point I had took this off and set it to the side. And then for the life of me, when I first completed the swap, I couldn't figure out why my car wasn't starting. It turns out that little piece was the issue. So with that little box is an ignition capacitor. Again, you need to put that anywhere, just ground it. And it does have a little square plug single wire square plug on the back of it so just make sure you put that somewhere um because what ha what was happening is i wasn't getting sparked seems to be running fine it's idling right about eight nine hundred rpms then just gotta get a few other things done i'm actually working on my ecu harness over there because i do have the manual eclipse ecu and an evo ecu at this point i'm gonna work on that a uh, conversion harness from auto galant ecu to the eclipse or evo so I'm going to get that done later. All right, so that's it, guys. Thank you for watching my video. Um, if, if this video helps you out at all, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. As you can see, my little wall back here, we got a lot going on for the Galant here in the future. Feel free to ask any questions you may have. I did have to do a bit of troubleshooting um, to get this set up. All right, but that's it for this video. So you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you later.